Energy, one of the biggest things that NBA coaches look for. You may have heard Greg Popovich a lot of times on those mic'd up huddles on TNT broadcast screaming, bring the juice. The juice in NBA terminology just means energy. But how do we measure that? How do we measure something that's pretty much intangible? Well, let's do a little case study. Let's look at a guy like Chris Dunn, his performance last night against the Atlanta Hawks. What made me do this, a tweet by Kevin Chouinard. Kevin does a great job covering the Hawks. No offense to him, nothing personal. But I saw this tweet, it rubbed me the wrong way, I responded to it in kind, and maybe we'll help change some minds here. Because Kevin tweeted out in response to Jim Boylan talking about Chris Dunn's energy, that Chris Dunn scored zero points in 19 minutes and had three fouls in about a minute, which got a whole bunch of retweets, a whole bunch of likes, but wasn't a really good way to measure energy. Energy, again, something can't really be measured in the box score and certainly wasn't measured purely by points and picking up a few quick fouls. Let's see instead. Let's look at the film. Let's look at his 19 minutes and see what kind of energy Jim Boylan might have been talking about. To start off with, pretty low scoring game to start when he comes in around five minutes in the first quarter. Just a really nice, solid read off the pick and roll here. Of course, this does show up in the stat sheet as an assist, but what coaches really like about this is just good, solid, fundamental execution of a play, making the simple read, the Tag man comes in and tag the pick and roll just a little bit. So you make that read pass over the top to Levine for the corner three. Again, that does show up, but just a simple play making the right read. Here again, we see another simple one, advancing the ball full court. Really underrated pass here with the left hand on a loose ball to whip that thing almost length of the court. Doesn't get an assist as Levine misses and gets fouled, but a really high impact, good play there. This play, drawn up for Vince Carter, coming off the staggered screen here. You see Dunn just blow it up. That's what coaches call this in the NBA. Hand-to-hand -hand combat, being into your man. Physicality makes Vince end up not even coming off the second screen. We saw just a night ago in New York, Vince had so little contact by the Knicks, he was able to go off, have a flashback to the good old days. Every guy in the NBA pretty much is capable of doing that if you disrespect them, especially a guy like Vince. Chris Dunn did not disrespect him. Instead, he played him tenaciously. Two seconds on the shot clock here. They end up running a little play to try to get Vince this curl off these double screens right here, trying to get him a late second shot. Instead, Dunn with great hustle on the play, ends up getting a hand on the ball, tips it, and you know what? That ends up being the difference between what could have just been a shot clock violation and keeping the game at the low score in 17-15 with three minutes left in the first. Instead, leads to an easy bu bucket at the other end. Here we see him again being physical with Vince, staying into his body. Vince gets that tight curl as they look for the late pass for the layup here, but Dunn does a great job continuing pursuit from behind, taps the ball, good effort play, ends up being Atlanta ball again. This doesn't show up in any way in the stat sheet, but coaches appreciate this kind of effort, this kind of intensity, getting on the floor for loose balls. Dunn was flying around everywhere last night. We see here, this is a play late shot clock where a lot of guys would just kind of stop playing for a second. Okay, I'm guarding Vince. He's not in this play, but you know what? It ends up being a random down screen for him late in the play. And Dunn does a great job, again, not quitting on the play, fighting through the screen, being able to get a hand up and contest the shot. Contesting shots makes a big difference. Coaches have found anywhere from a 10 to 15% difference in terms of making shots or not based on a contest. Again, trying to get a dribble handoff here, blowing it up completely. This is called taking them out of what they're trying to run, blowing up the play. The play, again, disrupts all the timing when you can do things like this, take them out of the dribble handoff they were looking for. Easy to Evan Turner. Great disruption by Chris Dunn. Keeps the pressure on the ball. Gets on the floor. 50-50 balls. I'm not even sure if that ends up being credited as steal for him. I think it does, but that's a huge 50-50 ball. It makes a difference in the game. And you know what? Again, your team feeds off that energy. Like Jim Boylan said, it ends up leading to this highlight dunk from Wendell Carter, but it all started with that 50-50 hustle ball by Chris Dunn. Here we see just really locked in alert defense on the flare screen by Vince, the heady pro, longtime vet. Chris Dunn does a great job recognizing, switching for Arch. If he doesn't switch this, it's an easy three right here. But you know what? Arch doesn't even realize the switch, so he makes the mistake of coming two on the ball. What Kobe White really should do here is stunt to Vince, end up staying with Turner. He's a rookie, though, so he rotates to Vince before the pass is made. A mistake. But you know what? Chris Dunn does a great job. He doesn't see Arch go to his man two and end up just stopping. He sees Kobe White 
go to Vince and pre-rotate too early. So he recovers short to Evan Turner, a non-shooter in the middle. Does a great job on the middle penetration. He's there on the help line, ready to stunt at the ball. Makes them think of twice about everything. End up scoring, but again, really good energy on that possession by Chris Dunn. You see, again, another hand on the loose ball here as Alex Len. A lot of time on the shot clock here, 13 seconds on the shot clock. But a lot of guys would just kind of stop, let Trey Young come up and get the ball. Chris Dunn doesn't stop on these plays. Ends up again getting the hand on the loose ball, which ends up fueling again Chicago's offense. As you see, a game that was really low score and ends up being able to slowly push away to 28-20. Picking up Trey Young full court, making him work. Putting pressure on the ball this is about as well as you can do with the hand checking rules to not pick up a foul right here. Trey Young's going to be able to get his shot pretty much whenever you want, but if you can make it so that he ends up coming down and not even using the screen and just not making a single pass and taking the first shot off the pick and roll, if you don't put any pressure on it, that's an easy three for him. If you put a lot of pressure on it, that's about as good as you can do on Trey Young. Again, making him really work. He's trying to use the screen to get to his right hand here. Chris Dunn does such a good job being into the ball. This is blowing it up right here. Trey Young can't use the screen right here because Chris Dunn is doing such a good job being physical with him, fighting him. Here he tries to use the screen now, going to his left. Dunn jumps a little bit towards the screen. Trey Young rejects it because he's a really good player. Dunn does a great job, again, getting a hand up to contest. Really complete defensive possession there that, again, isn't rewarded in any way by the box score. This will show up as a hockey assist, but again, just a really solid play here. Six seconds on the shot clock. Take his man one-on-one. -on -one. Look like he's out of control with a spin, but instead he knows exactly what he wants to do, reading the scheme. Teams are going to come over and double-team on this drive, make the pass to the corner, which leads to the extra pass. Bottom up, we call that, getting Otto Porter the slot three. Remember those dribble handoffs? Here's Chris Dunn. Blowing up yet another of these. Messes up the timing of the play. We'll live with Jones shooting 15-footers early in the shot clock. That's perfectly fine with Chicago. Dribble handoff. Nope. All night long. Dunn was a pest. He did not let Atlanta get into their offense. Messed up the timing of just about everything. Forced them to do something they didn't want to do. A big key to NBA defense. These guys are so good. Rarely are you going to completely shut them off. But if you can make them do, go to the second option, third option, you call that a successful possession in the NBA. Great awareness here. The last play I'll show you, just simple recognition again as we see Chicago now up 20 in the fourth. Again, not all by Chris Dunn. He didn't do it by scoring. Kobe White made the shots, but Chris Dunn made a huge impact on the defensive end. Ends up showing up as a plus 27 in the box score. Plus minus, not always a great stat. Frequently a pretty bad stat, actually. But in this game, it does a pretty good job recognizing that Chris Dunn did a lot of little things like this. As his man cuts through here, does a great job seeing. The Bulls end up getting two on the ball. Alex Len slips behind. Slips behind. He would end up having a dunk here. But Dunn does a great job being there, allowing Cornette to catch up. Ends up contesting the baby hook. That's Chris Dunn being in the right spot. How do you measure energy? Well, you really have to watch the games really closely. If a coach says a player played with great energy, usually they're on to something. But it's something, again, it takes eye tests. It takes really knowing what you're looking for. It's something that's hard to measure. But if Chris Dunn wants to be successful as a backup point guard for Chicago this year, he's got to bring that kind of energy, bring that kind of juice every night. Did a great job of it last night off the bench. That's what Chicago needs out of him, being a gritty pest defensively every night.